Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Stitch Sessions. Today, we are going to get all of our super duper brand new crocheters um, started on their very first project, or maybe not necessarily your first project, but something that's super beginner friendly and really fun to make. So we're going to make these um, hair ties or hair bow ties. Apparently, along with the scrunchie, hair ties are now back in fashion again. So uh, I thought this would be a great opportunity to uh, work on some really beginner friendly projects and make something a little bit different. So as you can see, um, it's just basically one long strip of fabric. But what's different about this is instead of just working it back and forth, we're going to be working this in the round. And uh, it's actually much easier than you might think. And it's super quick and you can make a whole bunch of these. You can, these can be great for uh, gifts, add on to gifts. And you can make them as long or as short as you like. And you can wear them in a variety of different ways, just like you see in some of these photos here. And uh, super fun and easy. Now, for those of you that are experienced crocheters already, um, this might just perhaps give you a little inspiration on something different that you can do with your crochet. Because I know sometimes, you know, we're used to tackling a lot of uh, larger projects and, and working on projects that sometimes push you a little outside of the box can be fun too. So without further ado, let's get our materials together and let's start working on our hair tie. Okay, so let's get cooking here. You are going to need a very, very small amount of yarn. I really recommend a super fine weight yarn. This is actually a uh, little bits and bobs I have left over from a previous project. But the yarn I did use was Red Heart's It's a Wrap. And it is considered a super fine one weight yarn. Now I know they recommend a, I think it's a three millimeter hook for this yarn. I am actually going to be using a 3.75 millimeter hook. And it's also known as an F or a five in case you go by that, in case you're wondering. And um, now you can, you know, you can use any yarn you like. You can, you know, if you have medium weight four lying around, you can certainly do that. The reason why I really recommend a super fine weight yarn is because this is really, I mean, in my opinion, it's really meant to be for a summer project. You're going to be tying it in your hair. Um, it's going to be hot, <laughs> as we've seen so far in the summer days. So you really, I mean, I don't think you'd really want something that's got any kind of bulk to it or feels like slightly thicker yarn in your hair or around your head. You know what I mean? So we're trying to keep this very light and cool feeling. And uh, this is actually 50% cotton and 50% acrylic. So it's perfect for a summer project, okay? So that's what we've got here. I mean, I don't even know how much I have, but you're not gonna need hardly anything. So this will be just perfect. And as always, make sure you have a pair of scissors and, um, you might or you might not need the uh, darning needle, but I always, these are the two things I always have on hand anytime I'm working on a project. So let's get cooking. Okay, so first thing we want to do is place a slip knot on your hook. Okay, now we are going to do a series of chains to create the length of your hair tie. Now, I like the look of that kind of vintage style hair tie where you're not really aiming to be able to tie it all the way around your head with like a loop bow. It's really just meant to be like a knotted bow. So I am chaining a length that will go around from the bottom of my skull, or, or like at the top of my neck and up around over my ears and at the top of my head with just enough space to kind of tie a knot so that the, the ends will kind of just sit loosely. So I am going to do a chain of 150. As always, it depends on how tightly you crochet. If you are super tight, you may need 
160. Or if you do want to tie a kind of loop bow tie, I would say go up as high as 200. And then, you know, once you have your chain, kind of wrap it around your head and see how comfortable it is to tie. But for me, I'm going to do 150 chains. So you'll just begin by yarning over and pulling through. Yarning over and pulling through, okay? So you beginners out there, this is extra practice for that chain stitch. And those of you that have been doing this a while, you'll breeze through this. So you'll notice I'm holding that tail down initially just to give myself a little bit of consistency in the tension. And then as I work more chains, I will just work my way up, okay? So go ahead and do that, and I'll meet you when you have your number of chains. For me, it is going to be 150. Okay, I have done 150, and I've got my length that looks like that, okay? So once you have the length you need, what we're going to do is we're just going to chain an additional two we don't really, and then into the third chain from the hook, right? One, two, three. We never count the hook that the um, the loop that's on the hook. We're going to insert into that chain, and we're going to place one half double crochet. So you're going to yarn over, insert. It'll be a little tricky on these chains because there's nothing really substantial to hold on to. You'll yarn over, pull through, then you'll yarn over and pull through all three. You have something that looks like that, which doesn't look like much yet. And that's what you're going to do into each and every single chain stitch. You'll yarn over, find the next chain, insert your hook, you might have to help it along there. Pull up a loop, so you have three loops on the hook yarn over and pull through all three. Okay, one more time. Yarn over, we're gonna find that next chain, which is right there. Pull up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, you've yarned over again, and you've pulled up through all three. Now don't worry, you'll see that your chains are stretching. That is normal, okay? So this is another practice run for working on your half double crochet, okay? So you're, if you had 150 chains like I did, and uh, then you are going to have 150 stitches, okay? If you get 149, don't worry about it. If you get 151 or 152, don't worry about it. So um, as long as your gauge is consistent, that's the main thing that we're looking for, okay? So one half double crochet into each stitch, and I will meet you at the end of your chain. Okay, I've just placed my last half double crochet into the final stitch. And so my band is looking something like this. So now it's got a little bit more substance to it, okay? And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come around the bend and we're gonna work along the bottom of the chain. So in fact, we're gonna complete a round now instead of a row. So we're gonna place another stitch into the same final stitch here, but we're gonna place a double crochet stitch. So we're gonna yarn over insert back into that same stitch. You have three loops, but this time you're gonna yarn over and only pull through the first two. And then you'll yarn over and pull through the last two. Okay, so you can see it's a bit of a taller stitch and that's gonna help us come around the bend here. We're now going to chain three. One, two, and three. And then we are going to slip stitch into the top loop there of your double crochet. And that's just to create a little peak there. So you're going to pull through and then pull through again, just like that. Okay, so it's probably hard to see. 
Okay, so you're just going to have a little bit of extra um, width here at the top. Oops, let me just pull that out so hopefully you can see what I did here. So we have the last half double crochet. Here is the double crochet and here is the chain three. So I'm just going to redo that. Okay, just so you can see it a little clearer. And I'm gonna go back into the top of the double crochet loop and I'm just going to slip stitch to join there. It's going to create a little bit of a peaked look and that'll come in handy for our second round. There we go. Okay, so it's going to look a little loosey-goosey right now. That's okay. So just going to pull that a little tight. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into that same stitch yet again, which is right there, and we're going to half double crochet. So you'll insert, pull through, and pull through all three. So hopefully now you can see we're coming up around the bend there. There's the chain three loop. And now we're going to be working along the bottom of our original uh, ch foundation chain row. Okay. So I like to try and work over my tails as I go. If you find this distracting, just push it down to the side and you can weave your end in a bit later on. But um, once you're here now, should be a little easier to find your stitches. So this is the one we've just worked into. So the next one is gonna be right there. Oops. So I'm gonna yarn over and into the very next stitch right there. I'm gonna work over my tail. I'm gonna place a half double crochet. And there is the next one. And that's what I'm going to do all the way back down until I get back to the very first stitch I did. So now you can see where that little peak is. Okay. So we're not going to count that peak there. You should have 150 stitches all the way back to the beginning as well. And I'm going to meet up with you once we get back to our very first stitch. Easy peasy. One half double crochet into each stitch along the bottom. Okay, and I'm just down to the final stitch right in there. So I'm gonna place my last half double crochet and then just like I did on the other end, I'm gonna place another stitch back into that same one. So remember, this is the bottom the first stitch we did. So we're going to place a double crochet this time. So we'll pull through two and then we'll pull through two. Okay, so it's coming around the bend there. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. We're going to come back to the top loop here of our double crochet. And we're just going to slip stitch that chain three and it creates a little bit of a peak. Some people call this a pico. There's slightly different variations on how to make a pico, but that's one for this argument here. Now it always looks a bit wonky right about here. So what we're going to do is we're now going to reach down and we're going to slip stitch to the top of the very first whoops, half double crochet we did to start off. So just slip stitch and that is going to join round one. So there's that little chain three. So just pull that out. And so now your hair tie looks something like this. So now you can see that our original foundation chain is running down the spine, what I call the spine of our band here. And, uh, and that's all it looks like, just nice and simple. It just looks like a nice, easy, simple little band. And frankly, if you wanted to stop here and be done, you could absolutely be done if you want yours to stay uh, a little bit daintier, a little thinner. 
I'm gonna do one more round here just because I want mine to have a little bit more girth. And you'll notice that you may feel that your length has shrunk a little bit. And that tends to happen once we start working stitches into the chain. That's why I always say I'd rather, you know, have a little bit extra than not enough. But uh, again, I'm not looking to make a huge bow tie with my ties, so I'm pretty happy with it. Let's go on to round two. So for round two, super easy peasy. We're going to continue doing what we've already been doing. So we've slip stitched to the top of the first stitch there. So we're going to chain one and then we're going to go back into that same stitch and we're going to place a half double crochet. Okay, nice and easy. Just like that. You're going to continue as you've been doing by placing a half double crochet into the top of every half double crochet you did in the previous round. So all we're trying to do here is just create a little bit more width to our band. So you can see it looks something a little bit like that. Super easy, okay? So go ahead and do that and I'll meet you once you get to the very end of this first side here. You're gonna come all the way here until we reach that chain three pico and then I have something special we're gonna do into there. So go ahead and finish the first side of round two. Okay, and I'm just coming up to my last stitch here before I hit the pico. Okay, so getting a little thicker. So in that, so in this chain three, what we're going to do is we're going to place three half double crochets all into that same space. Just like that. Now we're going to chain two and place three more double crochet, uh, sorry, half double crochets into that space. And so that is going to create a little peak, which is the effect I am going for with this look. Okay, and then we continue on. So there's the top of the next double crochet, sorry, half double crochet. And we just place one into there and it looks like I am running out of yarn. Okay, but I'll just take that out so you can see what that looks like. So now what you're gonna notice is that we're gonna have a little bit of a peak on each end, which is just kind of an added little um, finishing touch I'm adding to the project, okay? And now I have finished my little scrap here, but I have um, a little bit of scraps from uh, another color that I used off this same ball. So for me, it's not really gonna bother me. I'm just gonna attach the new color and then continue on and finish going down the way here, one half double crochet into each stitch until I get to my pico over here. Then I will do the same thing. Three half double crochets, chain two, three half double crochets into the same pico. Once we get to the end here, we'll slip stitch to join and we are finished, short and sweet. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and attach my new yarn and I'll meet back up with you just when we're doing our last pico here, just to kind of guide you through. In the meantime, you know what to do in the pico, then continue on and I'll be back shortly. Okay guys, so now I have attached my new color here just to end off and I've come to the other chain three loop here. So I'm gonna do what I did before and I'm gonna place three half double crochets into that same space. Oops. And then I'm gonna chain two and three half double crochets again. And that's gonna create the other point 
on the other side. So there's three, and then one, two, and back into that chain three loop there. So we have one, two, and three. And we are pretty much done. So that is the first stitch we worked. So we're just going to slip stitch into that. Okay. Now, technically, I'm going to slip stitch just like that. So see how it created a nice little point there? And so our band looks something like this. Oops, I'll have to just snip that off there. That's where the new color came in. And then when we go to the other side here, we've got the other point. Now you could be done. And in fact, originally I was gonna be done, but because I have this really small amount left of this color, I just wanna use it up. So what I'm gonna do um, is I'm going to do yet another round, but I'm just gonna use single crochets just to finish up this, um, this yarn. Now some people, what they might like to do is they might like to create a thicker band so that you have kind of that 50s look where you had that bandana um, thickness, I wanna call it, uh, to wrap around your head or even just around a ponytail. So the bows are really back in style this year. Uh, so you can really uh, create this in whatever width that you desire. So I'm just gonna add another finishing round of single crochets. If you're happy with your width as is, then you are pretty much done. One of the super easiest beginner-friendly crochet projects we've done so far. Okay, I'm gonna meet you guys when I'm done my finishing row, and I'll meet you back here shortly. And here we have our hair tie. And I actually love that it kind of curls up like that. It just gives it that cute little added detail. So as you can see, I did an additional round for mine. So mine in total, I did five rounds. And that's just because um, I actually did uh, run out of that purple. Remember I added that purple there and I thought that was gonna be enough just to get me one whole round around. And I ran out of that halfway through, so then I used some of this other leftover um, fine weight yarn, and that gave me the opportunity to do a full finishing round, and I'm super happy with how that came out. So, see how easy this was? Very beginner friendly. And as you can see, it makes for a really great bow tie. You can make it as long or as short as you like. You can even just wear it as a, a headband if you want. Um, it's very, very versatile. So hopefully you beginners out there had a chance to feel like you could practice some of your basic stitches and create something simple and cute as an accessory. So there you have it. Now remember to uh, say hello to me on Instagram and tag me and show me some of your creations. I always like to see kind of what different colorways you guys choose to have and uh, your lengths and your widths and all that uh, fun stuff. And don't forget that we also do an interactive online crochet class. And uh, that's where you can uh, follow along with the project with me, but also ask me questions live as we go. I can also have a chance to check your work and see how you're doing. It's really a lot of fun. So um, you can find that over on our website, which is crochetcrafty.com. And as always, I'll leave a link in the description box down below with all of the places that you can find Crochet Crafty and us here at the Stitch Sessions. In the meantime, have an amazing day, guys. Happy crocheting. Take good care, and I'll see you guys in the next session.